So we're making a small jinga, but we just use the knees to bounce more. Otherwise, if I just jinga small here, it just looks, it, it lacks life. We need to bring that life, which will come from the rhythm, of course. Now, as you bounce here, keep the jinga small. You can take care of the leg more, as if you're just dragging that foot. So that's the idea behind this jinga. We are bouncing. And that bounce is going to start to give us a lot of more options into the feet. Now I'm just sort of tap dancing a little bit more here. And that's okay, because that's coming from this small space. Nice. Now we're going to make that jinga large. Okay, let's make the jinga large now. Large. And by large, I mean I'm trying to step wide, of course. Okay. But now, I have to compensate that by really being efficient with my arms. Otherwise, my body, my upper body looks, you know, not synchronized with my legs. So you have to, whatever style, maybe your arms are up here, no problem. Or maybe they are down here. But make sure you make a statement with your arms. Make sure you make a statement with your arms. Wide jinga. That's good. I'm gonna warm up more now. Isso. Very good. Okay, excellent. Now we're gonna go from this position and we're gonna close our feet. Just that, okay? So we close the feet and open. So we go here, there's a little bend to the right, okay? A little bend, like a side stretch. And then I open here. So it goes, um, dois, move your arms. Três, quatro, and five. Other side, um, dois, três, quatro, cinco. Okay, excellent. Guys, your arm should move like a U, especially the top arm. So if you just do this now, think of a U, really go side stretch here. Yeah? So think like that. So we go, um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, change side, e, um, dois, move your arms, três, quatro, cinco, ok, ginga, ginga, come back up for air now, Excellent. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this leg here. Now, as you can see, the idea behind this, if I put this shoe here, so you can see, the idea behind here is that I kick the shoe, see? So it's not this that we are working on. Okay, prepare. Turn out your left foot and um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, other side. So I turn out your right foot and um, dois, três. Quatro, cinco. Okay, Again, that's great. So one is white, and then I close here. And you can bend quite a lot here. Then you reset, and you go one, two. Reset, one, two. One, two. One, two. One, 
two, one, two, one, two. So this is a movement that really will illustrate very much what I said in the beginning of the class. The power of understanding body language, narrow, small, or wide. Of course, we are learning this. So depending on the situation of the game, we're going to add, we're going to change this. So this is going to be dictated later by the other, by the game. But it's very important that we have the ability into our body. It's a bit like saying, I am training a voice to reach a certain note. So whenever you're given a song that hits that note, you can hit that note. It's a little bit like that, okay? <clears throat> that does not mean that you're always gonna use that note in every song, because every, some songs will not need to hit that note, okay? Right, so let's learn together. I want you to just balance in a wide posture. So remember, everything is related to body language now. So a wide posture. That means I'm quite like a, like a star, a wobbly star. Okay, other side. A little wobbly star here. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be balancing there. And then I go to that foot and I turn into Hastera. Now, I would like a Hastera on the floor. Okay, so I'm balancing here. And then I go hastera with my hands on the floor. Okay, here. Then I go to this foot. And I go to the floor. Really make sure you look underneath. Okay, so take your time, balance. Once you're there, think about this. This foot. So I go to this foot. And I use one movement. And when I do that, I turn out my foot. And then I sweep. Let's go. If I do from a narrow stance, right? If I do my hastera from a narrow stance, that's one feeling. That's one feeling. Okay? Narrow stance, that's one feeling. If I do from a wide stance, that's another feeling. But more than the feeling, we're also talking about the situation. Now the situation is, you do a Habja higher, and what's happening at the end of the Habja higher, you're going to, just as you come up, there is a kick here. And what is happening? You're going to switch. So the classic, this is classic, one format together, Hastera. Another format, wide, Hastera. Wide Hastera. So that's what you're gonna do now. You do a half higher. If you want to retrace the movement, you come up and you switch. Okay? A lot of expressions in capoeira, they come from something that you're going to do and then you cannot do, or you don't need to do, and the energy fades somewhere else. Now, focusing this point as is quite, um, perhaps, revealing for a lot of you. So you're going to do something, you've trained something, you have that in your repertoire, if you need to use, and as you're going to use, you don't have to use. Then that fades into something else. And that's where some of the expression comes. And that's also where some people think they are just watching a dance, which is a dance, but they don't know that that movement that looks so dance-like actually came from another thing. In the case of Hastera, if I'm doing a kick, if I'm doing a kick and I, I need to sweep because the other person's kicked me. But if I go for that and for some reason the person don't kick anymore, so maybe this expression now could turn into something else. Maybe, maybe here, you see, that's just completely change this into, or even 
and then sweep again. That's quite nice. Or even, can you see that fall? Now I'm just doing, so you can see like, it's like winding for flexibility and for strength together. So you're going to use this part of the chair just as a reference, just to touch. Again, if you don't have a chair, that's fine. I'm going to show you without the chair, okay? It's just a little better for the mind to use a chair. All right, so from here, I want you to turn your feet slightly away, slightly away from the chair. Okay, so like a, a little resistance. So now my body is not completely side, just a little bit like that. I'm going to lift the outside knee, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little resistance here. I touch the chair, and I come back up. But how do I come back up? I push this bone. I think of this bone lifting for me to come back up. Now that's a very important point there. When I back bend here, I want you to think of this bone lifting. And then the last thing that happens is the body. So I'm not thinking here. I'm thinking leg, straight, bone, lift, come back up. So the movement is this, look. I go here and I come back up. Really lift your knee. Now, if you haven't got a chair, you just go slower. Just go slower. And legs, I just fell. You see, that's why it's difficult without the chair. But you just go a little slower. Bend that knee. Come back up. Or you could use the wall. Could put your hand on the wall. Anything. Now, advance. We are going to lift this leg. And come back down. All right, let's do the other side, and then we're gonna do a proper, a proper, proper set, okay? Okay, so I turn away from the chair, almost there. Look, I'm, I'm sitting on the chair now, but I'm just sort of diagonally on the chair. And then I'm going to arch from here, lift the knee, synchronize this, guys. So you're not doing this, look. So you're not doing that. You're synchronizing leg with the body. Um. If you don't have the chair, stretch your arm more. Dois, that's going to balance the movement. Tres. E quatro. Lifting the leg. Okay, let's change now. So now we're going to do five times. And we're going to really work this out. And we're going to really work the hip coming back up. Okay, so we go. Um, your supporting leg is bent. Stretch the leg advance. Dois. The top hand is going like a macaco. Três. Quatro. Cinco. Okay, let's change side. We'll do a nice stretch forward after this. Okay, so we're gonna fall into that resistance. Um. Beginners, you can stretch the arm and just go a little bit, look. Reaching. Dois. Três. Quatro. Five. Okay. Now, take your time. Let's go from here. Bend your knees. Put your hand on your leg. And just let your body go into a bended knee forward stretch where I'm going to grab the opposite elbow and just let the head fall and just hang in there. Slightly lift your tailbone a little bit more. If you feel the muscles release. Quatro. Feel the heaviness of your arm. Rolling your toes, big toes inwards so you're not turning out. And 
And then if you can, go ahead, place your hand on the floor, bend your knees even more, go to a little deeper forward bend now. And come back up, bend your knees really well. If you need to put your hand on your legs, do that. And lift your hands to the ceiling. And although this realization will sound like generalizing, because we're all different here, it does not apply to everybody. But if you are in a place in your ponchi where you are, let's say, let's give you a few ideas here. If you are, sometimes you can do the ponchi well, sometimes you cannot. Some days you can, some days you cannot. <laughs> yeah, some days you can, but only if you force a little bit more. So I'm not talking to those who can wake up in the middle of the night and just do a back bend and, you know, I'm talking to those who can do only when you're very warmed up, that kind of thing, okay? Now, for, for you guys, then it is very important to work very, very slow. Now, there you go, ah, that sounds obvious. It's so important to do super slow ponchi, really controlling the breath, if you can't, you're going to use the wall. But I think that you need the go-ahead from your teacher sometimes to practice that. You're going to get into your ponty. I'll show you. So slowly. And you're going to appreciate each and every part of that transition. Without forcing to get to the next part. And just give the illusion that you can tumble into pont, tumble into pont. You can do that. But it, it's never available for you. Now, when you work really slowly, and then you can do that without any hesitation, that point is then available for you. Not only when you can do fast, okay? So that's As something. As you practice, okay? So, Jinga, the first movement was um, and then I go to this foot, look, I'm being pulled to this foot. E dois, correct? Other side, Hastera and close but then we did the habja higher so now i go habja higher hastera and close i don't do a full hastera okay habja higher remember look hastera and then close and then is a hole so it goes the sequence now, you go, um, dois, três, rolê. You're all gonna do this, then I'll be able to watch you guys. So this is a movement that people ask me a lot about this movement. Something that I, it's not, not that I became recognized for that, it's something we did a lot. It's, it's, it's all my teacher's credit, but because he used to train us a lot with this, it's part of our repertoire, it was always part of our repertoire, okay? So the foundation for the, this movement can be done on tippy toes or we can do on flat feet. It doesn't matter. It is better if you can be on tippy toes, but if you cannot, at the beginning, it does not change the value of the drill, okay? So you can, to begin, just like a macaco. If you can be on tippy toes, then it's better, all right? Now I turn out my hand, so my fingers are curving in. My hand is not forward, my hand is turned out like that. Now let me show you from here first. So this is a macaco posture, all right? What I want you to do for now is just this, look. I want you to see how my arm is a bit far from my body, okay? Not too far that I, I'm already struggling to be there. Certainly not close to my rib cage. Now, I want you to go there. I want you to go there and then just turn into a queda de rins. Whatever level you are, maybe just here. If you want to put your knees on the floor, I don't care, it's not a problem. We're just learning the movement. Now, if you are on tippy toes, then again, put your hands there, go a little bit. Now, by here, I'm starting to, I want to bend this arm, 
I can't just bend my arm here, it's gonna hurt my shoulder. So as I bend, I move my body there and I bring my arms in. So I'm starting to direct into the move. Do a couple and then change side. So you're not overdoing on one side. So here, make sure there's this, look at that shape. There's a triangle shape here, okay? And then I'm gonna go up and now I wanna bend this arm. I turn the body and I put my hand on the floor. This is a different concept from a cabbage hinge that starts here. I am starting to develop something here. So here, here. Then I go other side. Turn into a little ball there, okay? Something that is very natural. <laughs> we want to do that, but we're gonna avoid that. So we're gonna keep the neck quite tense to begin. So my neck from here, I'm trying to look down actually, looking down here, you see? So as I go there, I am not hitting my head on the floor straight away. Now the idea of the movement is that as I get better, I want this hand not to stop here. I don't want that. I want this hand to start to go more this way and I get a little better at controlling that. Now, all of your endings, Okay, so if you are ending, let's say you are ending like this, it just feels a bit like that. That is perfect for now, you, you have to do that. You're not to worry about landing a certain way yet. Obviously, we're going to tackle that. What you're really tackling here is this part, turn, and if you're like that, that's okay. Take a time between. You must not approach these guys like you approach kicks. Don't approach this like you are, you know, one, two, three, no. You're taking time, take your time here. Now I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more of the neck. Now I'm gonna try to bring a little bit more of the neck. Okay? So let's try again. Now, start to bring your hands just a little closer. Little closer to the rib cage. Let's so what you're not to do now is to go so far backwards trying to do the movement and then squash yourself like a backwards roly-poly. So for now, your neck is gonna be quite tense and forward. And as you get better, I'll demonstrate for you, what is going to happen eventually is like a volta prosima but your, your head, although is on the floor, is lifted because your, your body can support on the floor. A little bit like this, look. Watch how I, I can stop. This is a little bit of a party trick. I'm not sure if I can still do, <laughs> but it's a little bit of a party trick, look. I'm gonna do a bananera just before. Let's try one more. You see that? So be able to hold your body. So I'm not going out. I can just before stop. Now if I want to, I touch the floor. So that means I can definitely control my bananera there, right? Same things happening here. You begin by being forward. So now there's no weight on my head. No, my head did not touch the floor. But as I get a little bit better, and I go more this way, then there is weight here. Now, the side of my head is touching the floor, but it's not so bad because I'm not collapsing there. I can show you that by going here and coming back up again. So now I can This is the full sequence for tonight. Mm -hmm.